The Future Timeline is one of the most emotional and somber stories in the entirety of Dragon Ball. From the death of Goku to the heart virus, to the androids overrunning the entire world, and eventually to Goku Black alongside the destruction of the entire timeline. But what if it didn't need to be this way? What if I told you that Goku's death shouldn't stop him from helping our heroes in the Future Timeline? Well, it all starts in heaven. A big misconception most Dragon Ball fans have is that Goku would be on King Kai's planet after he dies, but that actually isn't how the afterlife works. Goku had to receive special permission to run Snake Way and train with King Kai in the Saiyan Saga. Goku would end up where he did between the Cell and Buu Saga when he dies to the heart virus. Heaven. While King Kai's world is still in the afterlife, it isn't actually in heaven. So Goku would end up in heaven after losing his life to the heart virus, going around the heavenly realm to find and train with the martial arts masters of the past. However, everything wouldn't go perfectly in heaven, as eventually Goku is found by his friends who all died to the androids. All of his friends, besides Vegeta of course, who still hasn't been redeemed and was sent to hell to be purged. Their arrival in the afterlife wasn't due to timely deaths, so he asks them what happened. Before we get deeper into that though, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more Dragon Ball content. Piccolo explains to Goku what's happening on Earth, the return of the Red Ribbon Army in the form of androids who have betrayed their master and started wreaking havoc on the world. It's then Goku notices that Gohan isn't with them. Piccolo says that Gohan has managed to survive, and Goku says that's great. With Gohan alive, there's nothing to worry about. During his time in the afterlife, Goku realized that Gohan has potential beyond any of them. If he's still alive, he can surpass the androids in no time. Piccolo trusts Goku's judgment, and so they drop the topic for the time being. Goku shows the Z Fighters around the afterlife and introduces them to the great martial artists of history. Meanwhile, Earth is being ravaged by the androids. Even with training and multiple attempts, Gohan couldn't defeat them, and as the years passed, he couldn't even teach Trunks to turn Super Saiyan. Gohan feels like a failure. He feels like he'll never be the man his father was. Eventually, and inevitably, future Gohan is killed by the androids, leaving Trunks all by himself. In the afterlife, Goku notices that souls are still coming into heaven from Earth. They haven't stopped for over a decade now. Eventually, one soul comes to heaven with a body, and it's none other than his son, Gohan with a fully restored body courtesy of King Yama. Could the androids be so powerful that Gohan, even after 17 years, has failed to destroy them? Or is this just some new threat? Gohan runs to his father and gives him a loving embrace. He hugs Gohan back, asking what's happening on Earth. Gohan tells his father that the androids are still on the loose. Now, this was something that Goku couldn't put off any longer. Those 17 years were great for Goku, but Earth and his son have been suffering. He needs to do whatever he can to help. Goku finds Kami in heaven and asks if he'd be allowed to teleport to King Kai's world. Kami says it shouldn't be an issue so long as Goku doesn't leave the afterlife. So Goku tells his friends that he'll be back in a day or so and teleports to King Kai's world with Gohan. King Kai is shocked to see Goku again after so long. He asks how heaven is treating him, but Goku says he doesn't have time for small talk. He asks King Kai if there's any chance he can be connected with a few people on Earth. The Kai realizes that Goku knows what's happening on Earth, and he tells Goku that returning to Earth isn't allowed, so don't get any ideas. But he can communicate with some people should he need to. Goku thanks King Kai and begins a telepathic connection with Trunks. Gohan talks to him since Trunks doesn't know who Goku is, and he tells Trunks to hide for the time being. They have a plan to save the future. Trunks understands and goes into hiding with his mother as she continues to work on the time machine. The next person they connect with is fortune teller Baba, who is conveniently in King Yama's office already as she's trying to avoid the conflict on Earth. Goku tells Baba that they can save the Earth, she just needs to send them back to it for a day. Baba agrees to do it if it means getting things back to normal, so Goku and Gohan are returned to Earth for one single day. With 24 hours to work with, Goku teleports to Trunks and Bulma. Both are brought to tears seeing the two alive. 
Goku greets both, but tells them they only have limited time, so he can't do any small talk. With Kami dead, there are no Dragon Balls, but Goku has an idea. They can get a new Kami from New Namek. He tries to sense new Namek, but can't find it. He asks Bulma if she knows what direction it is, but she doesn't have any idea where the new Namek is. Goku is getting frustrated. This was a big part of his plan. Then he remembers King Kai knows about every planet in the galaxy. Surely he'll know which direction new Namek is. So Goku teleports back to King Kai's planet and asks which way new Namek is. He points and Goku teleports there, getting an older Dende to agree to be Earth's god and restore the Dragon Balls. Goku then brings Dende back, and with the Dragon Balls restored, Goku, Gohan, and Trunks collect them as quickly as they can, getting all seven Dragon Balls in only a few hours. When they assemble the Dragon Balls, Trunks asks what they're wishing for. Goku asks Shenron to revive Gohan, but that's all Goku had in mind for this plan. Goku asks Dende what happens if they don't use all three wishes, and Dende tells him that the Dragon Balls will recharge in four months if they only use one wish. Goku understands, and he tells Shenron that they don't need any more wishes. Shenron nods, and the balls scatter. Now there's less than half a day remaining before Goku must return to the afterlife. Gohan asks why they didn't revive Goku too, but he says that the Dragon Balls can't revive anyone who dies of a natural cause. Unfortunately, the heart virus counts as natural. They don't have time to mourn him though. Goku has to prepare Gohan and Trunks for the battle against the androids. So to start, Goku shows them the fruits of his training in the afterlife by transforming into his mastered Super Saiyan form. The power is extraordinary, and is far beyond anything Gohan and Trunks could manage on their own. Goku tells the two that they can achieve this power and even more if they learn to train the right way. So Goku tells them to use the Room of Spirit and Time. This place will allow them to master Super Saiyan with time to spare. Both Gohan and Trunks look at each other confused, and finally, Gohan asks why doesn't Goku just go beat the androids? Goku tells them both that his time has passed. He can't ever return to the living realm ever again after this 24-hour visit is over, even if he did defeat the androids, and that's assuming everything went perfectly. It wouldn't protect the world going forward. They needed to step up and win this fight. Both understand and ask what they have to do in the time chamber in order to achieve this mastered Super Saiyan. Goku smiles and explains that they need to train while remaining in Super Saiyan the full time. Eat, sleep, and train in Super Saiyan, never leaving the form for even a moment. Gohan and Trunks realize how hard this will be, but now that Trunks has Super Saiyan since the death of Gohan, they can use the full time to master the form, which is a luxury that even Goku didn't have when he went in with Gohan in canon, as Gohan needed to be taught Super Saiyan. So after a day in the Room of Spirit and Time, Gohan and Trunks emerge. Despite mastering the form in the first few months, they decided to use the full time to get as strong as possible, and the results are just staggering. Both of the Half Saiyans have immense potential, so they are far stronger than the Goku and Gohan who emerged from the Time Chamber in canon. In all honesty, both of them are even stronger than Super Saiyan 2 Gohan who fought Cell, which should make it clear what's about to happen. Dende greets them and tells the two he's kept track of the androids for them. They are currently in a city nearby. Both immediately fly from the lookout and begin the search for the androids in the city. They follow the trail of destruction and it leads them straight to the origin, the androids who are sitting on the rubble of their work. Android 17 laughs, surprised that not only is Trunks back, but Gohan is somehow alive too. He was really sure they killed him last time. That's when Android 18 tells 17 that Gohan's arm is back too. Now he's really mad. Were they tricked? Whatever it was, they wouldn't let them get away this time. 17 goes after Gohan and 18 goes after Trunks, but something is clearly different. Their punches weren't effective at all, their blasts were shrugged off without even blocking, and every attack from Gohan and Trunks were devastatingly heavy. The pressure is just insurmountable, but they have no choice but to press through. Quickly, Trunks ends Android 18, but Gohan was more meticulous. He was taking his time to make the androids suffer, 
a rage was boiling to the surface that could only be quelled by what he deems justice. Eventually, Android 17 backs up enough and trips over rubble, only to find a person hiding behind it. He quickly grabs the person and looks to Gohan. He tells Gohan to let him go now or the man dies, but Gohan keeps walking forward. Seventeen assumes he must not have heard him and repeats himself, but he still moves onward. So without further hesitation, Android 17 kills the man he was holding. Gohan becomes even more enraged, eventually tapping into power beyond Super Saiyan entirely. This is Super Saiyan 2. With his emotions no longer bottled up under a facade of strength, Gohan charges forward and grabs Android 17. He tells the android that the man he killed was his last chance. Gohan didn't want to kill, he didn't even want to fight, but 17 has left him no choice. With one final attack, Gohan ends the last android. Or so he thought. For now, it would be months before the world could be fully restored using the Dragon Balls. All the Z Fighters killed were able to be revived with the exception of Vegeta because all of their bodies were brought to the afterlife. With Piccolo being deemed a worthy soul by King Yama and Dende being the new god of Earth, Kami sees no reason to remain separated from Piccolo any longer, so the two merge into one once again. With Piccolo having trained in the afterlife alongside Goku, he was already extremely powerful, so merging with Kami only furthered that growth. Piccolo was now comfortably in the top three strongest Z Fighters, right alongside Gohan and Trunks. With everything restored, and Goku and Vegeta remaining dead, the story's focus shifts to a focus on the characters that are left behind, Gohan and Trunks, the next generation. It would be several years after the androids were defeated before Cell would emerge from Jiro's secret lab, and with the world restored through the use of the Dragon Balls, Cell has plenty of targets for absorption. Plenty of targets, besides the androids of course. With the androids destroyed, Cell's only option for gaining strength was to absorb people. However, the absorption of people didn't go unnoticed by the Z Fighters, who were able to eventually hunt down and corner Cell. Gohan has come up with a plan where they would split up to the city's nearest cell's last location in order to hunt him down. This eventually allows Piccolo to run into the monster and have a battle against him. This battle was for Piccolo to gain knowledge and have fun more than win right away, as Cell isn't really a threat, so once he lures Cell into a false sense of security, he reveals everything. Piccolo smiles and thanks Cell for the information, killing the monster right afterwards. With Cell defeated, Piccolo contacts everyone else to let them know that the threat is gone and they can wish back the people who were killed. But Piccolo tells them to use the second wish in order to wipe the minds of everyone who remembers Cell as well. Living in fear wouldn't do them any good. So both wishes are made and Earth returns to normal for several years, until the attack of Bobbity. The warlock planned to resurrect Boo who was sealed on Earth millions of years ago, but before he could strike, Supreme Kai and Kibito arrive on Earth to gather the strongest fighters there and train them up. This time, he trains Gohan, Trunks, and Piccolo, focusing on Gohan mastering the Z-Sword over all else. Right before Shin could test the sword with a brick of Kachin, which would release Elder Kai's seal, Bobbity makes his move. Piccolo handles Pui Pui and Trunks handles Yakon, but with Dabara on Bobbity's side, Shin and Kabito fear the worst. However, Gohan outclasses Dabara in every single way. He doesn't give the King of the Demon Realm a chance to turn the Z-Sword to stone or to kill Shin and Kabito, allowing the fight to end entirely in his favor. With Dabara defeated, Shin and Kabito take the shell of Boo and return to the realm of the Kaioshin where it can be kept safe. Notably, this means future Beerus is alive, however, we're long past the time when he should have awoken in search of the Super Saiyan God. This means either Beerus decided he didn't want to wake up, or he went to Vampa instead, which is a topic I've already made a video about. Since the present timeline was never created, there's no Goku Black to worry about as that is Zamasu's origin point. The resurrection of Frieza also would have happened already, but didn't, most likely due to there being no Dragon Balls on Earth at that time. 
and we're even past the time where Zeno would have wanted to destroy eight universes, meaning he didn't decide to do it in the future timeline. This means we've achieved true peace. With Goku having helped, a lot of trouble is avoided, but isn't trouble the fun of Dragon Ball? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Dragon Ball content, and thank you so very much for watching.